our school, we were studying about Poland. So I brought posters and a peasant costume I got from my grandmother when I went there. Then Miss Wilson asked me to tell the class about my visit. Well, I began. When I was six years old, I went and visited my grandmother on a Polish farm. That was in 1939, just before the war started in Europe. My father wanted to visit his mother and relatives whom he had not seen for a very long time. Besides, he thought it would be a nice vacation for me too. I remember my grandmother, my Uncle Thomas, and his horse and wagon, and the old village in which they lived. Their home was made of wood. The roof was thatched with straw. Behind it was a pond where the ducks used to swim. When they walk, they wobble from side to side. This is also where the children play, but it's not a safe place because they might get in the way of my uncle's horse, Shivek. He walked round and round all day long to thresh wheat for their daily bread. Grandfather guarded Shivek. He wore a hat to protect his head from the sun. It didn't stay on his head much, though. Everybody works hard to raise enough food to eat. You see, Polish peasants do not buy food from the stores the way we do. Everything they eat comes from their own farms. The women dig potatoes while men do harder chores. But they also have fun. After a week of hard work comes Sunday. On Sundays, even my smallest cousins dressed up to look their very best. They took special care to curl their hair, very much as we do. Though, of course, their styles are a little different. Then they go to church. The children walk separately from the grown-ups. Only the sick stay at home. Nobody has an automobile. They walk or ride in horse-drawn wagons. Some ride their bicycles. The wagons are parked near the church. The horses munch hay while they wait. In my grandmother's village, women and girls wear the same costume. My aunt told me these are called Lovich costumes because they are worn only in Lovich province. They are very heavy and hot since they are made up of at least three woolen skirts. One Sunday, there was a wedding at the church. The bride and groom had to push through the crowd. The bride wore the Lovich costume with a veil over it. Afterward, there was a dance in the open air. The dance was called the Kuyavyak. When Chopin was a little boy, he listened to this music. And when he became a great composer, he wrote many beautiful tunes based on Polish folk songs. to school. In school, the little ones dance in a circle, sing songs, and clap their hands. Then they sit down at the table, draw, and learn to write the alphabet. Some of the girls wear shawls. to see them play the same games we do. Not all of them have shoes, but that does not stop them from running fast and having fun. Peasant families cannot always afford to buy shoes for growing children. After a few weeks, we left my grandmother's village to visit Krakow. Here the children made school trips to old historic buildings and museums. We do that here in America, too. The 
numbers on their hats stand for their school. Krakow was the capital of Poland in the old days of kings. Here stands the cathedral where the trumpeter of Krakow was shot by a Tata arrow while he was blowing his trumpet call. The Vistula River runs right through the center of the city. The peasants of Krakow have a dance they call the Krakowiak. These costumes are very colorful. The boys wear peacock feathers in their hats and the girls have gay ribbons and beads. part of our visit was the trip to the Tatra Mountains. They are in the southernmost part of Poland, on the border of Czechoslovakia. We rode over the mountains in a cable car. We could look far down into the valleys. It was just like riding in an airplane. The Polish people say that to them, these are the most beautiful mountains in the world. in the mountains. There they grow potatoes, wheat, and other food. But the good owls are shepherds. Small children tend the sheep in the meadows. Their clothes are made of sheep's wool. The beautiful design on the trousers are embroidered by hand. Grown-up men wear the same costumes. Around their hat is a band of seashells. That is because, as the Gural say, they originally came from the seacoast. Their belts are made by hand out of leather with heavy metal buckles. At home, the women weave cloth. They even make their own shawls and blankets. They paint pictures on their dishes and carve beautiful designs in their spoons and furniture. Even the paintings of the saints are made at home. These things are so beautiful that a special school has opened so that young people from all the cities in Poland could learn the Góral art. carving, the girls make laces. One of the favorite designs is a mountain flower. Then on Sundays, the girls relax to the music of the bagpipe and fiddle. The young folks dance. In one dance, the boys fight for a girl. The boy who loses his hat is out. That's the way I remember Poland. The gay dances, the beautiful costumes, the old historic buildings, and the hard work in the fields. Our last stop in Poland was Gdynia. Gdynia is a new city port on the Baltic Sea. It is clean and modern and reminded me of America. Then came our ship, 
flying the American flag. And then, goodbye to Poland as we left for home. We did not expect at that time that war would come to Poland so soon. Thank you.